want to start off with a quick story, um, kind of quick, maybe not so quick. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> might leave out some details, might not. Um, when I was 16 years old, uh, no, when I was 15 years old, I got my first ticket, right? I flew through a red light. Um, well, I mean, it wasn't all the way red. I was a little bit yellow, but, you know, it turned red as I hit the line. So I got pulled over anyways. Point is, I got a ticket. I got my first ticket when I was 15 years old, right? Fast forward a little bit, turned 16. 16 years old, I get about another two tickets. Um, and when you don't have a license, tickets usually run about 600 bucks. When you don't have insurance, another $600, plus the infraction of whatever you did. Speeding, red lights, whatever, you know. So obviously I, I barely even had a job. So, you know, tickets are starting to pile up. And I decide, you know what, I don't really like the government. I don't trust them. I, I shouldn't give them my money. They're not really using it for what they're supposed to be. So why am I going to give them my money? So I decided I'll, give, I'll throw them some cash here and there when I have extra. Fast forward a couple more years, I'm 18. I still don't have my license. Uh, I actually got suspended from the first ticket because I didn't pay it, right? So this is all building up, you know. Three years goes by, I'm 18, I don't have a license. I have maybe about two, yeah, $2,000 in fines that I haven't paid. Not because I haven't had the money, but because I have procrastinated to not pay those fines. Fast forward a couple more years, I've gotten more tickets and a couple more uh, no license tickets, but I got my license. <laughs> I got my license after I paid them a little bit of money, but I didn't completely pay them off. And why didn't I pay them off? Because I didn't want to. You know, because I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn, man. It happens, you know, some of us, just hard-headed, and we don't care, and we're just like, whatever, you know, and fast forward a few more years. Uh, mind you, every time that you get your license suspended, you know, for those of you who are just now driving or whatever, you know, because they will suspend your license if you just get a ticket. I mean, a lot of the times, you don't even have to owe them a bunch of money. You could owe them, you know, 50, 100 bucks, and they're still going to suspend your license if they see fit. So, you know, uh, I have had it on and off for ever since I got it when I was 18 years old. And I have paid thousands of dollars in, in fines and in, uh, in getting my license back every time. I did, a, I, I did a total of how much I've spent in just renewing my license, and I've spent probably about 2,500 bucks. Just renew them every time. And I... You know, the, the reason why it comes in with my sermon, how it ties in, is that yesterday, yeah, yesterday, uh, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to completely pay them off. I'm like, I'm going to stop beating around the bush. I'm like, if I screw something up and for some reason they decide to suspend my license again, not only will I get more fines, but this time I'll actually go to jail because of my DUI stuff that I have going on. And uh, so I decided enough is enough, and I have to pay them off. I have to pay them off, and I have to move forward with my life, and I have to stop procrastinating on getting it done. So I did. I paid them off, never talked to them again. They don't need to know who I am. I don't even care who they are. They're paid off. <laughs> so anyways, um, the title of my sermon is, The Early Bird Gets the Worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Right. It kind of sounds like they, they kind of contradict each other because you think, well, yes, I want to be the early bird because I want to get the worm. But sometimes you miss that opportunity, and there's always another one waiting for you. You get the cheese. Um, I just want to read you from Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 12, number 24. It says, the hand of the diligent will rule 
while the slothful will be put to forced labor. A very good example of that is major corporations. Um, so, you know, there's people that'll, that'll be in school, that'll be, you know, breaking their back, that'll stay up late nights, that'll do this and do that, and they'll get it done. You know, they're going to they're gonna succeed, they're going to get their degree, they're going to move up in the company, and they're going to be somebody. You know, they're going to decide. They actually want to be somebody. So they're going to get up every morning, they're going to go to sleep late, they're going to do what they have to do to actually move forward. But there's also the people who are slothful, who are lazy, who procrastinate, who decide, oh, well, you know what, this assignment isn't due till next week. So that means that I have till next week. Oh, it's due on Friday? Well, I can do it Thursday. Oh, it's Thursday. Oh, well, I guess I still got a couple hours. Oh, it's Thursday night. Now you're freaking out. Now you actually have to do it. And a lot of the times it's like, okay, well, what if you have a test the next day? And you decide, I'm not going to study. Why? You know, I got all week. So you don't study. And then Friday comes, and your test is due, and you know nothing. That procrastination is going to set you back in life. You know, being slothful, being lazy is going to set you back, and you're going to end up being just, you know, some laborer. Not that there's anything wrong with manual labor, but, you know, there's always an opportunity to better yourself. God, where one door closes, God will open you another one. You just have to take that opportunity because a lot of the times we miss that opportunity and we just let that other door close. And then we sit there and we mope and, and we pout and we say, God, why are you doing this to me? Why aren't you giving me opportunities? And God's over here like, dude, like, are you serious right now? Yeah. Look, but we're too busy putting our head down moping when we should be lifting our head up and seeing what's in front of us, what God has for us, because he always has something good for us. And, you know, to put that whole corporation thing into, you know, what the Bible says and, you know, what God says, uh, obviously the same thing, um, is that when we get saved... When we get saved, it's almost, like, it's almost like we graduated high school. You know, so now we're graduated. Now we have the choice. Do we want to go to college or do we want to kind of just follow everybody else? Just drift in the wind, you know? And uh, we have to make that choice on how we approach our God-given life. We can either work diligently for the glory of God we can become somebody in the church, a preacher, a singer, you know, a, a guitar player, pianist, whatever. You know, there's so many different opportunities that we have, and we just actually have to take them. You know, God's going to open up doors and, and give us all these opportunities, and we have to sometimes just decide to suck it up and take them. You know, one of the the devil's biggest trick is to tell you, yeah, you know what? Everything that he's saying, he's right. He's, he's not lying about anything. Everything that that guy is saying is right. But you don't have to do it today. Do it next week, you know? Join choir next week. You know, get up there and, and write your sermon next week. You don't have to do it right now. The Bible doesn't speak about tomorrow. The Bible speaks about right now. And that's what we have to do. We have to do it right now. You know, if, if there's anything that, that you know, if uh, I'm sure there's people in here who are not in impact groups. You know, why haven't you joined an impact group? Well, maybe I don't have time. Well, maybe you do. Maybe you do have time. Maybe you're just making that excuse that you don't have time. You know, you say, oh, well, I want to be a preacher, but I don't think I'm ready. Well, it's not that you're not ready. It's just that the devil's telling you you're not ready, but you are ready. Right. You know, it's, it's as easy as writing a sermon. You know, sit there, pray, 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 and God will give you something to write down. And I'm not saying, you know, take the first thing that you write down and, and get up there and preach it. 
Don't take that advice because that's not good advice. What I'm saying is actually take the steps to move forward and into what you actually want to do. I need some water. It's in our nature to procrastinate. It really is. Um, And, you know, sometimes we do it because either we're too lazy or we get too comfortable with our routines and we don't want change. You know, why? Like, everything's going so good for me. Why, do I, why should I change anything of my routine? You know, everything's going grand. Um, but we need to break free from it. And the same thing goes with repentance. You know, it's like you commit a sin. You know you sinned. You know what you have to do is repent and get right with God. But what do you do? I'll do it later. Why do it now when I can do it tomorrow? You know, for example, Adam and Eve, they sinned. And what did they do? They hid. They hid from God. And what do we do? We hide. We hide from God. We're like, hey, God, I I got you later. Like 7 o'clock, I promise I'll be there. But we don't. We don't, we don't repent. We don't actually take the opportunity to repent and to ask God for forgiveness and to get right with him. But what a lot of people don't understand is that the reason why you need to immediately repent is because... Oh, is it, hold on a second. I don't know where I wrote it down. Not the point. The point is the Bible says, tomorrow is promised to no one. So, or actually, no, the Bible doesn't say tomorrow's promise to no one. The Bible says, do not be boastful about tomorrow. The reason why you shouldn't be boastful about tomorrow is because tomorrow's promise to no one. I don't know if it says that or not, but I know that it says not to be boastful about tomorrow. And we shouldn't be boastful about tomorrow because you're saying, you know, well, I'll do it tomorrow, you know. And, you know, tomorrow might not come. I know, I know, I knew this guy who, well, a friend of a friend who did heroin, and he was seeking God, and, you know, he was trying, and he was trying, and he was trying, but the thing is, he didn't want to give up his life, he didn't want to give up his friends, he didn't want to give up what he thought he had was a good life, he didn't want to give it up in order to follow the true path of God. Just last year, he died of an overdose. He overdosed, and he was never right with God. It's sad because some of us, you know, we think, oh, well, you know, I'm young and, you know, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm careful. I do this. I do that. You know, God's got my back. But if you're starting to drift away from him, if you're starting to live your life in sin and you're not repenting, you know, your sin's going to build up. And, you know, you have to stop procrastinating and start getting on your knees and praying. You know, what if tomorrow doesn't come? What if, you know, you're driving down the street and somebody hits you? Or, you know, what if die of natural causes? I mean, there's been young guys that just have heart attacks just out of nowhere. You know, athletes, young athletes, you know, in high school and in college, you know, at their prime of their life, and then, bam, they drop dead. Only they know if they were right with God. And we need to know in our hearts if we're right with God. So the first chance you get, you need to get right with God. There's anybody in here that's not saved? You need to get saved. There's absolutely no circumstance where you can tell me that, well, I can't get saved yet because I still have this to take care of, or I still got this to take care of, and God knows when my time is right. Well, your time is right now. You know, God knows that you need to be right right now because He knows when your clock's going to end. Which brings me to my second point. The second mouse gets the cheese. Um, If you take what what I said on math, oh, actually, let me backtrack a little bit, sorry. Uh, Matthew number 30, or chapter 9, verse 37, 
says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. There's millions, if not billions of people out there wanting and needing to be saved. Which now brings me into my second point. Second mouse gets to cheese. You take what I just said from Matthew and place it here. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Just because you think you might have missed an opportunity before doesn't mean that you won't have another one. And another one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, it's a joke. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe, maybe let's say you have a coworker who's uh, been talking to, you know, one of your other coworkers about God, and and you know, a year goes by, and they've been inviting them to church, and they've been telling them this, and they've been telling them that, and and you know, it doesn't seem like nothing's getting through. Well, maybe it's because this is supposed to be your opportunity to get in there and get them saved. You know, maybe you're the one that's supposed to talk to them, give them a different perspective, something they might understand, and get them saved. You know, let's say you talk to them, they decide, okay, you know what, I like you. I'll go to church with you. They come to church, they get saved, bam, you just grew a root. You got to grow your trees. You got to, what's that word I'm looking for? I don't know. I totally forgot. Um, And a lot of the times we don't do things like that. We don't decide, hey, you know, I'm going to talk to this person because you're too scared or you're too lazy or you sit there and wonder, well, what are they going to think of me? You know, what if, what if I talk to them about God and now they're not my friend? Well, it's not your job to make friends like that. Obviously, they weren't meant to be in your life in the first place. You don't want negative people like that in your life. We're called, here, we're called here to be the early bird and hop on every opportunity that we can to do God's work. But if you're like me and you're not really a morning person, there's always the second bus. comes in 15 minutes. Don't worry. The next opportunity will come. <laughs> and I just wanted to conclude by saying, yes, it's always good to catch the first bus but there's always going to be another one. So don't give up hope. And just because you think you miss an opportunity doesn't mean that God's not going to have another one waiting for you. Just don't procrastinate. And don't sit there and wait around until something happens and you know, until you feel like this is the right moment because you might not ever get that right moment. Tomorrow is promised to no one. Uh, I just wanted to read a quick poem before I close. Uh, too long I've laid me down to sleep and prayed the Lord my soul to keep. I should awake before I die and realize time is passing by. Raise and go and tell the loss despite the plans, or despite my plans, despite the cost. Too long I've laid me down to sleep while multitudes about me weep and other cries of dark despair and no one ever seems to care. My life is short, and soon I'll stand with sinner's blood upon my hand. Unless I, wait, unless I awake before I die and realize time is passing me by.